Hi, welcome to my channel and in this tutorial I'm going to make a tree like this and we're going to make this tree from scratch so you don't really need anything prepared apart from the Maya software. We're going to use several techniques including Maya's Mesh which is designed for motion graphics in particular but we're going to use that for um, distributing branches and for this little animation. So to begin with we're gonna create two different image textures for the branches and one is an opacity map one is a standard color map. So this one is rendered in Maya but if you want to use your own texture that was captured in real life that's no problem. If you already got your texture, you can skip this part. So, anyways, to create that type of texture, you can go into Content Browser. You, we're going to use a model from Paint Effects. And if you go on the Paint Effects and Trees, you're going to see many different trees. But I'm going to use this one, Birch Blowing. If you just click and drag, you already got a tree, which is nice. And I want to extract one of those branches, but there are so many. So I want to reduce the number of branches by going to the attribute data. And if you go on the tubes over here, you're going to see grow setting and we can reduce number of tweaks and branches as well you only see this one and it's quite easier to extract and if you go on the leaves, you could increase the number of leaves, or you could even decrease. I think three or four is enough. I think that's enough and you can adjust the length or base width and all the stuff and you're if you're happy with the shape now we can convert this paint effect into a polygonal mesh so if you go to modify convert and paint effects to polygons is now a polygonal object. So I'm going to extract this branch. So I'm going to select that part and inverse selection and delete everything else. Same for the leaves. I'm going to delete everything else. Uh, we only got this part. Lovely. And now we can select them all, delete history, and we can now get rid of those curves and strokes now let me move this branch object let me center the pivot and move the pivot to the very end of the branch and move it to the very center of the grid And actually, we need to clean things up a little bit. So if you view it from the top, things are quite messy over here. So let me just move those leaves so they don't overlap with each other. 
You could delete some of them if you think it's too much. The main thing is you remove overwrapping and make sure those leaves stick to the actual branch. You can just relocate them. this guy and if you think you want more of those sleeves you could go to add a mesh and duplicate and the option uh, you're gonna disable this separate option so it just stays in the same object so you can just move these faces And it stays in the same object, so you don't really have to worry about merging things again. Now we got this. Let me just rotate this guy. Now if you're happy with it, it's time to create a new camera. So... I'm going to view it from the top. And if you go to view menu and about here, you're going to see create camera from view. So we got a new camera and actually we are currently viewing through that camera. So um, now I'm going to turn on film gate, so resolution gate, let me just tear this off, resolution gate and change the fill to vertical and we can just frame it like that and if you select the camera by clicking this button if you go into shape node you're going to see also graphic views and if you enable it now the no longer a perspective for this camera only so I think without any perspective is a bit better for a flat 2D image so I recommend turning this option on let me try to render this out now Let me just change the camera and this is what we see and that's because we are rendering in Arnold renderer but the material is something else phone shader and we need to convert the shader into a Arnold compatible shader. We can simply do that in Hypershade. So we're going to go into Hypershade and if we take a look at the leaf shader for example, we got this shader connected to the upper node but we can get rid of it and immediately your leaf object turn into green and um, I'm going to create a new node AI standard surface and it comes with this output node but we don't really need that I'm going to connect this out color to surface shader of the existing output node now it's no longer a green and we can use these existing textures for the base color and the opacity. So I'm going to connect the original 
texture to the base color. You could use this one, but it's a bit yellowish. I'm going to go with the original one. And now we need to make the background transparent. And to do that, we're going to use this bit. Other than that, it's reversed, so it's not going to work for Arnold. So we're going to pick this output and connect it to opacity. And I figure that we need to increase these numbers for it to work. Just crank it up to 100. Now we start to see something. All right. One more thing you need to do is probably reduce specular and increase roughness. Or you could just decrease the specular way all the way down to zero. And um, after you've done that, we're going to do the same thing for the branch material. You can just delete the shader and make a AI standard surface shader. I accidentally deleted it. And delete the output node and connect it to the existing output node and use the image texture for the base color and reduce specular. And if we render this out, now we see this. If you don't see anything in your render view, make sure you got a light in your scene. I got this area light looking down on the object. And in the render settings, make sure you got your aspect ratio right. It should be one by one, or it could be something else, but I recommend one by one aspect ratio. And I'm going to go with a thousand by a thousand. You could go higher if you want a higher resolution. And I'm going to keep it, keep the samplings quite low because I want it to be quick. And let me just render this out. And one more thing before you go, make sure that you got your opacity enabled in your AOVs. Originally, you're going to see this in one of your available AOVs. If you just scroll it down, you can see it here. You can just add it like that. And if you render this out, and if you go on the view and AOVs, you're going to see opacity. And we're going to use this for our opacity texture. Now, if we're done, we can save these images. And make sure you save it, save those images as a PNG format. And you just simply have to type in dot png at the end of your file name. And the same thing for the beauty layer. Name is something like that. Save it as a PNG file so you keep those alpha channel. If you save it as a JPEG file, you're gonna lose your alpha channel, which is which makes things harder for you to use it as other maps such as Bacula. Anyways, we are done with creating branch textures, so now we're gonna move on to the to the actual tree model. Modeling the tree is quite the same. We're gonna use the paint effect brush again 
to save time otherwise you can just model it manually by yourself but it's actually quite easier to do it this way so this time I'm gonna use this birch dead brush because it's got no leaves it's a bit easier to deal with and I'm just gonna try several times until I get a nice shape Oops. all right I think I quite like that so if you go into attribute editor and you can see very similar settings here you want to go to tubes and if you go to creation you can tweak the width of the tube like that and there's a second option And if you take a closer look, the caps are open. So if you want to close them, you can go under mesh and enable and the caps. now and you can reduce this for a lower poly mesh it doesn't have to be this high resolution it's just for the base mesh and now let me just go back to the settings Set up the growth of this tree. I think I want more branches and probably we can reduce twigs this time. And let me tweak those settings until I get the shape I want. You can play with all these settings until you get the shape you want. as well probably that's enough and if you're happy with your shape again we're gonna convert this thing into a polygon polygonal object and you can turn on texture to see the textures and we also need to convert this um, existing existing shader to a Arno compatible shader. Uh, so let me just center the pivot and move the pivot to the very bottom. Let me just move it to the center of the grid. I think I want to rotate this guy. Something like that. Let me freeze transformation and let me save it before we create the branch object. I'm just gonna call it tree. Alright. 
now we're gonna need a plane and let me reduce subdivisions for now and assign a new material and we're gonna use the texture that we just created in the early part of the video and we got this color texture and the opacity map and before we apply the opacity map let me just disable opaque in the Arnold settings under the shape node and you we can go back to the shader node and on the geometry session you will see opacity and we can apply the texture we created like that and you don't see the background transparent you just have to go to the renderer setting pupil 2.0 and change the transparency algorithm to alpha cut now it's working nice and let me add in a light maybe a skylight this time and let me increase intensity after three and let me disable camera visibility and we can actually scale this down to zero so we don't see it in the viewport but still have effects on those meshes in the final render so let me check this out how it seems in the render view as you can see it's working pretty nice now we're gonna distribute this object to this guy onto this guy and before we do that let me add in some cuts here Should delete these parts since there's nothing there. You can start to, you know, tweak the vertexes a little bit to make it a bit more dimensional. You could add in more cuts. Move the vertexes until you get some interesting shape. I think that's enough. And by the way, you see nothing underneath the surface. That's because two sided lighting is turned off. You can go to lighting in the viewport and enable two sided lighting so you see both sides, which is pretty cool. Alright, now we're ready to distribute this guy. Before we do that, let me move the pivot to the very end and move it to the center of the grid and probably scale it down. And I'm going to delete history and freeze transformation. Uh, let me just clean this thing up a little bit delete all the unused curves and um, now we can change our workspace to effects and you're gonna see mesh menu and with this branch object selected you can create a new mesh network if you go into options you're gonna see geometry type and I want to choose instance and you can just create it now you're gonna see this array of branches but before we change the distribution type let me 
select this um, ba tree base mesh and um, let me go back to modeling workspace I just want to triangulate I mean quadrangulate everything and delete history again and duplicate this guy and uh, let me just isolate this one I just want to delete some of them so the bottom parts to be exact and clean things up a little bit the reason I'm doing this is because I want to use this guy for the distribution domain so the leaves only grows on this mesh so we don't see any branches in the very bottom of the tree which will make no sense so we can actually hide this guy and if we select the mesh network again you're gonna see mesh one distribute and you're gonna see distribute type and you can change this to mesh and you can see input mesh we can simply drag this thing into this input mesh now we start to see some branches you can simply increase the numbers so they're quite off Probably we need to scale it down. It automatically hides the original object that should apply the mesh network, but you can still show it and adjust them. Adjust it a bit like that. It already looks like a tree we can do something more if you go to the mesh network again you'll see many nodes available we're going to use the random node and just remove positions options here we're going to use rotation randomization maybe XYZ all of them so now we got a bit more randomized look you can also adjust the scale just add a little bit of it if you add too much it will go mad so probably 0 0.5 is enough something like that there is also random seed if you don't like the shape and keep tweaking the numbers there are also strength setting and now we can increase the number of points you can make it as dense as you want but personally I think a about 200 150 is enough let's try 500 this is also not bad keep it down a little bit okay I'll just hide this guy again and um, now we, we need to finish the material setup if you go into this guy this needs to be converted so AI yeah, standard surface like we did the last time and just connect it to there and use the color or the base color probably increase roughness and reduce specular or you could use this as a specular map 
Let me just try it. Specular roughness. And probably we can use this as a bump map. So let's try adding a bump to the node and connect this out alpha to bump value and out normal to normal camera of the AI standard surface shader. And one more important thing is if you go into your texture node, you will see alpha is luminous turned up. You should enable it for it to work. And uh, if you take a look at the preview, I think it's working. It might seem a bit different in the final render view, so I think 0.5 is enough. Nice. So let me just uh, test render this guy. Quite visible though. Let me save it. And if you like the shape and you want to convert this um, mesh object, I mean instancer, into a normal standard polygonal mesh, you can select your mesh network and let me go to the mesh menu. If you go to utilities, you will see um, switch mesh geometry type. If you do that, you're going to turn into a wrap row mesh, which you can select and probably duplicate like that. No problem at all. So, let me just select the leaves and if you go to materials you're going to see subsurface scattering and this one really helps out with the realism and um, add some green subsurface color I'm going to reduce the radius also with some green tint that is enough maybe Probably you should do some research with this setting. My computer is very slow, so I can't really preview all the settings. So, yeah. Let me frame this in with the resolution resolution gate turned on. So we can see. bit more closely all right it seems pretty okay probably too dense but you can always you know reduce the numbers like that and yeah I think the final render should look um, something like I can't really find the image. Final render would look something like this. I've done renders of different trees and um, yeah there was something like that and uh, yeah one last thing would be the animation so if you play this now you're gonna see nothing but there's an easy way to add some wind animation to it and that animation can be created by using this signal node so add in a signal node 
and again avoid using position for this one we just need rotation just add a little bit not too much just a little bit and there's some other settings such as noise octaves probably two is enough and uh, and noise scale and time scale matters a lot so if we play it it's a bit too fast so probably you wanna reduce noise scale it's a bit gentle you want things to be faster for a time-lapse animation for example this might work I'll make this thing a bit more gentle like that probably you could try with more octaves this weighs a bit more aggressively like there's a storm coming anyways it's a very simple way to make a tree animated you can even make your branches way using blend shapes or enclose simulation even but I'm not gonna go into that in this tutorial and um, Thing is, that's about it for this tutorial. You can just change the settings until you get the shape you want, or you could even um, make many different versions of your tree using a rand random seed value. And yeah, that's that's the technique for making a tree using Myers Mesh network and I borrowed some stuff from Myers paint effects but that pretty much it for making this tree and the current poly count is about 3600 can be more optimized you could just go into your tree object and start deleting some of those useless edge loops to save some poly counts or you could reduce the number of leaves or you could create another texture for bigger branches with um, more divisions, I don't know. You try different things, be more creative. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial and I hope this video was helpful for your work. Thanks for watching.